Uh, hello, my name is Kostin Lorafi. Uh, today's webinar is about user management and employee onboarding. Uh, so today's webinar, we'll talk about uh, user creation and we'll go all the way down, um, all the way through mobile user creation and then we'll have Q&A at the very end. All right, so without further ado, let's go on. So, user creation is a um, two-step process with uh, the iTrack system. To begin, uh, now this might differ between whether or not you're self IT managed or if you have an IT team in the back end, but the first step of the of the user management process is creating a um, user in the Microsoft portal. So what this means is you'll be giving them your company email, you know, potentially giving them access to Word, SharePoint, and Teams and some other Microsoft products, um, not just CRM. So I track and the Microsoft portal work hand in hand. So the first step you're gonna do is on the left-hand sidebar, you're gonna go hover over the users panel, expand it, and then go down to the active users. So this is just a demo environment and all the names here are uh, basically fake, but the first thing you're gonna wanna do is go into add a user. And I'll just give up a quick little pop-up and this is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, for the first name, we're gonna use Aaron. Fastsec, the display name will automatically populate. And for the username, we can either go, you know, first first letter, last name, or you know, first name dot uh, last name, or however your company uh, uses the naming convention. We're gonna leave the automatically create a password. However, if you want to make a password yourself, you can remove that and fill it in. I like to use the automatically create because it just has the strongest security. It usually puts uh, an uppercase, a lowercase, some special characters, some numbers as well. Um, obviously, it's a bit tougher for some people to remember. So if you feel like that person is going to forget their password a lot, you can make an easier password um, here. Cool. So the next we're going to do is just hit next. The location doesn't matter. And when it comes to an uh, I track user at the bare minimum and just a disclaimer we're just working off of someone who might use the portal we're not going to be talking about any CRM users just yet that'll come in uh, user management 201 we're going to give them this power apps per app baseline access license um, you should have 10,000 in your tenant so it shouldn't be a matter of uh, limit there and the next thing we're going to do is hit next the roles and profile info don't really matter so we'll hit next once again. And we see here that, uh, sort of just giving you that, is everything okay kind of uh, screen. From there, we're gonna hit finish adding. And we see here that these are the user details. So I'm just gonna hit copy, go into my notepad of choice for now, and just save those details um, on my second screen here. So everything looks pretty well and dandy over there. We're gonna hit close. And then we see his name is now populated in the active users. The next thing you want to do is open up his um, his user record, go down into groups. You see here manage groups, and we want to assign a membership. So depending on um, depending on how your company set it up, it could be called D365. Some people have it called iTrack365. Uh, we're just going to give them that iTrack 365 um, user group. I'm just adding COVID-19 as this is our COVID environment. We're going to add there. And once you do that, um, this is basically telling the Microsoft portal that, hey, these guys are going to be using the CRM system. So from there, we're going to just minimize the Microsoft portal for now. And we're going to go into the iTrack CRM. So from there, um, we'll go into the settings bar on the top right, and we'll hit advanced settings. Now, some of you guys may be used to the old UCI, or the old uh, user interface, sorry, um, and some of you guys may be used, new, used to the new one. Um, regardless, when it comes to setting up a user, you'll always want to go into the, uh, the back end of advanced settings, as the new UCI doesn't support uh, user record creation just yet. So from there, we're gonna hit this little drag down. 
go into security, go into users, and then we're just going to search for the user we just created. So we see that he's not there just yet. It will take a second for the um, user record to show up in the CRM. So if instead of just waiting around, you can always um, jump into the iTrack system and it'll just go uh, you know, backwards for a little bit. So the next thing we're going to do is create the employee record by hitting new in the so on the left hand sidebar, go to employees, go to new. And then we're going to fill out the same information we just filled out earlier. You see everything else sort of fills out um, in this user section. This is where we would link for that Aaron Passec user. It just doesn't exist right now and I'll come back to it later. Um, in the company, you know, if let's say you have subsidiaries or you guys have multiple companies within CRM, this will just allow you to um, better filter and change some of the portal settings between companies. And for office, same idea, um, depending on where you want this employee to be located. The next thing we're going to do is hit form business unit, and this will just allow you to, um, like I said, further filter as the users using the portal and some other things, reports to review by. These all go with training and procedures, position might work with job roles, and so on. So depending on how much um, your company uses the system, you might see a lot more um, use in these fields. The next thing we're going to do is go to the contact information tab and fill out this company email. So we said it's aaron.passec.itrack365.net. Now the reason we want to fill this company email out is this is the email that he will be logging into um, mobile with. So whether or not you want to make it a real email or you know Gmail, it doesn't matter. Whatever email is inputted into this field is the um, email that will work with the mobile user. So we'll hit save for now. As this is happening, we'll just go back here, refresh the page and see if the um, user was created properly. It looks like he still wasn't there. Cool. So the next thing I'm going to show you guys, um, just as we're waiting for the user to log in, is just a little bit of troubleshooting. So for example, you know, let's say we've been waiting here for an hour and we still don't see the user um, logged in per se. What we can do is we can don't know why that went away. We'll go back into settings. We'll go down to security. We'll go into business units. And we'll find our um, master unit. So we see here that all of these business units we have are related to this parent business. So we'll get into the parent business unit. And this could be a bit more technical. But if we go into users and we scroll down, sometimes we do see the user we just created here. Fortunately, we don't, um, but if you do see him here, you can actually just select him. And from there, you can actually enable and disable and sort of force that refresh to happen. All right. So just for the sake of the webinar, um, obviously we don't want to wait for this entire thing to happen. So what we're going to do, we're going to go down into Diane's record, if it still exists. Oh. So we will jump into this iTrack support record just for the sake of showing. And we see here that the username will be filled out. So this is the username that he will um, log into the iTrack portal and iTrack CRM with. We see his name is filled out, his email is filled out. So everything here looks pretty well and dandy. The next thing you can do is change his business unit from here by just hitting the magnifying glass on the right hand side of business unit or at the top, go into change business unit and you can hit the magnifying glass here and see them all. Now, the one thing with this, just so you know, is it says here, when you assign a business unit, you will remove all roles. And what that means by removing all roles is if I go up in this top header and we go into manage roles, we can scroll down to the eye track, it is alphabetical order. And at the very bare minimum for the user to use the iTrack system, we want to give them that iTrack user security role. 
Um, now, let's say this is a manager, an HSC manager who, who will review incidents, they'll review hazard IDs. You might want to give them the eye track manager just for a bit more permissions. But if we're talking about Joe on the um, on site, we just want to give them the eye track user security role. Um, and obviously, there's a lot of security roles here that we can talk about. But as I said, with the webinars progressing and it gets more technical, we'll talk about those. So all you need to know is either iTrack user or iTrack manager for now. And we'll hit OK. Cool. Um, the next thing you want to do is let's say there's a team that you want to add them to as well. You can just hit the plus sign on the team record. You can hit search and you can find the teams that you want him to be added to. All right. We're going to say no, and that'll come back with employee offboarding as well. But um, teams have a use in terms of if someone's filling out an incident and it's going through the statuses. When it hits the review stage, you want to hand it over to the HSC manager team. If that user's on the team, you can have multiple people working on that specific form. If there are any distribution lists with emails, that team can also be referenced. So Teams really does work well um, with the iTrack system in terms of status changes. So we're going to go back to see if Aaron was yet to be synced, and it does not look like it happened just yet, unfortunately. So that's not a problem. So from there, uh, we see here that that this Aaron Passack user was created, our employee record was created. Sorry, um, if we wanted to keep him as a user, as an employee, just for the sake of, um, let's say you want to have an employee for. Your safety meetings. He does not. He's never going to use the iTrack system, or he's never going to fill out any forms. But you know, the HSC manager might just select his name for those safety meetings. You can keep him as an employee here without a user, and his name will show up in those picker lists. As compared to, if I go back into our iTrack support um, employee, we can see here that he has a user, meaning he is able to access that iTrack um, system. So all you'd have to do to add a user to an employee role is to hit user, search for the user's name, hit yes, and that's about it. So once that's done, all the roles that you gave him in terms of iTrack user or iTrack manager are now linked to his employee record. All right, so then the last thing we want to do in terms of um, giving a user a mobile uh, record, you want to go into forms on the bottom left here. It'll pop up a window. We'll go into settings. We'll scroll all the way down to user options admin. So from there we're going to hit. We're going to hit new. We're going to search for the employee. We'll just say Aaron for now. And now, like I said about that user company, um, whether or not the color scheme of the portal could change, this really affects that as well, but we're going to keep it at the base one for now. And at the very bottom, you're going to see a couple of options. So if it's just Joe on site, you might only want to give him forms and activities just to let him see the tasks that were assigned to him and let him submit the forms and maybe also documents, you know, in case there's any WMIS files or any files he needs to sort of review. Whereas if it's, uh, you know, more of a, a competency manager, a training manager, you don't want to go and just allow sort of all the other um, sections to be shown. So that's kind of the idea behind that is um, what do you want that user to see and how much do you want them to access? So at the base, just as a reminder, we like to give forms, activities, and documents. So once that's done, we'll hit save. Cool, everything works here. And this device pin is just syncing to our connector. So what that'll do is in about 15 minutes um, or so, this will actually provide a five digit number. And then Aaron, who the employee we created, will be able to go using this email, this company email, and log into the iTrack mobile app once that um, user options admin device pin is created. Now, just as a little bit of a guide as well, this pin here is not the same as the pin I just referenced. This is a totally separate pin. As you can see, this pin is populated, whereas this pin is not. Now, if you want to jump back and forth between employee and user options admin, sometimes on the employee record, you see at the bottom right, you'll see the user options admin field there, but you can go into related, go into user options admin, and you can see his name and employee pin and his restrictions there. 
So that was a, a quite a lot to take. Unfortunately, Aaron's user did not properly sync up and you can just keep looking throughout the day. So we see here that at the end of it, that was about 10 minutes for it to sync. And once that's finished, we can hit yes and hit save. And now Aaron has access to the system once we give him those um, proper proper security rules, like I mentioned earlier, by going to the user record, hitting manage rules, and adding iTrack user. Well, so that's about it for employee onboarding. It's not too complicated. Um, just as I mentioned, your IT providers might have to do the first step of it, uh, but if not, if that's not the case, you can probably finish one employee in about 10, 15 minutes, which does not seem too bad. Cool. So uh, with that being said, I think we're all good. I know if, I sort of felt a bit rushed, um, but you can find the recording to this webinar on YouTube um, in maybe about a week's time. So we'll make sure to send that out to you guys as well. And that document that I provided in the chat will come useful um, as you're filling out security um, and user rules. Uh, and, and, and as always, if you guys have questions, I believe I've spoken to um, the people in the meeting a couple times, but for the people watching on YouTube, feel free to message support at iTrack365, and we can jump onto a Teams call right away just to make sure that um, everything is being set up correctly and answer any of the questions you guys may have. Cool. So in two weeks, we'll be talking about um, employee offboarding. So we'll be letting go of Aaron Pasek here. We'll be talking about um, some Power BI changes with the new data models and talking about sort of the usages there. And then we'll get some back into that CRM navigation series that we were doing um, before the Christmas break. So a lot to come. Just keep an eye out on our website and keep an eye out for the emails that we will be sending our way. Um, for the most part, webinars will happen biweekly at 2 p.m. going forward. So uh, if you guys have any requests for webinars as well, because you guys are struggling with the iTrack system, please let us know right away and we can make that happen. So with that being said, I do appreciate everyone coming. And if there are any future questions, feel free to email at support at iTrack365.com um, and I'll answer you guys' question right away.